Okay, guys, I think, uh, sorry about that. I think I think the sound might be a little bit better. I think uh, there won't be as much distracting background noise now. Is, is that okay, you guys? You guys are okay, sound-wise now? Yeah. Okay, cool. All good. So, sorry about that. Um, okay, so yeah, so um, so great. So if you guys are still watching those videos, you can, you can finish them up after their, their, uh, their, their brief intros. Um, again, we have a, a guest speaker today talking about invasive species. Um, but before John Joy, before Dr. Lambrinos joins us, I wanted to just um, catch us up on a couple uh, logistical things. First and foremost, we've closed down our, our survey. Thanks, you guys, for all the, the pushing uh, it that you, that you did and, and sharing it. Um, it was obviously a crazy time. Um, and, and difficult for, to get people to take it. But we had a bit over 400 people respond. So that's great. Um, I have just tossed into the chat the, um, the Excel spreadsheet that's our summary data that we'll use for our, our exploration as to, to how people are thinking about the coast and, and how they may be changing their behaviors and that kind of stuff with COVID. Um, uh, I, I found some errors early this morning as I was playing around with it at about 5.30, 6 a.m. Um, so so uh, I will be posting a final version uh, later today. There's some, some numerical things don't quite work right when you try to do some of the statistics. So there, there's a few um, coding errors I need to clean up. But regardless, I wanted to, to at least share this document with you and go over it so it makes sense when I, when I do post the full version. So... Um, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. And uh, and just want to, so what, what I've put in the chat and what I will be uh, posting later today is this. <clears throat> this is an Excel spreadsheet that's the summary of our data. And you guys can see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. And so um, this, this is a worksheet um, that has two tabs. So just so we're all on the same page here, um, the, the um, you know, column A, B, C, D, et cetera, they're exactly the same between um, each of the, the two sheets in terms of what the, what the question was, et cetera. The difference is the um, coding of the values is is one of two alternative ways right so so one so if i so for example here we look and it says this this one was done at this one was started at uh october 5th at uh 1523 hours etc right and so it's all good it says and if we look here for example in column i it says this person was in the united states of america this person this, these are again the questions we asked them are you are you in what country are you in and they responded that's how we got this um, we didn't get some kind of uh, spying software or whatever to figure out where they were. Um, so, uh, so it says, you know, United States of America. Okay, cool. Uh, California. Okay, cool. But if we flip over to this other tab, so for example, I am at uh, row 10, column J, and it says California. If I jump over here to numeric values and I pick uh, 10, and column J, what you'll find here is that instead of saying California, it says the number five. So that's just, it, it's, there's a numerical code or, a, um, or, or the actual text that they picked. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. So in some cases, it's easier to do one versus the other. They're equivalent. So however you guys would like to look at the data, you have either, you have both formats of the data. Um, where, where we do have an, an um, uh, uh, um, uh, open-ended answer they could have typed anything that will be identical between the two so this is so the only things that are coded differently here are where they had a, a defined option daily weekly etc um, does that make sense okay cool all right so um and then what i'm generating for you guys uh, I think I'm doing it on the choice text tab. Um, if you scroll, well, once you get the, the, the final cleaned version, um, if you scroll down to the bottom, uh, so again, up to 
row 422 in our data set, that's all the that's all the potential data, right? All the real data. What I've done after that is I've started calculating some summary statistics for you guys. And uh, you don't need you don't need to wait for me, but I'm I'm trying to make it a little bit easier for you guys to to glance at this. Um, what I've done here is um, for this particular row K, which in this case said how many people 18 years or older currently live in your household. So that's adults. Um, I've just calculated the average by putting in a formula here for, for averaging all the numerical values here and then the standard deviation. So for example, in our data set, we have on, on average 2.8 adults living in the quote unquote average house. And we have about 0 0.4 children on average living in each house, et cetera. If, if we scroll a little bit to the right, um, what we have here is I have, so in this case, this question was, uh, are, are, you, uh, um, are you or were you an essential worker during the last many months, right, of the pandemic? So the first one is the, the total numerical summary of people that answered that. Note, this person said yes, this person said no, Th this, this person didn't answer the question. So they just stopped the survey, or in some cases they, they continued answering the survey, but they didn't, uh, they didn't um, uh, answer that particular question, right? So this is, this is uh, so potentially there's a different number of respondents for each question. So there might be, you know, 420 respondents for some question, for, for one uh, column. The next column so there might be 418. The next one there might be 390, et cetera. So for each question, we calculate the number of people that responded to that question. And so uh, right here we have, um, and again, I, I need to double check this because this is I, I was doing this really quickly when I started noticing some errors. So I need to go back and do a little quick QA, QC of the data to, to see if there's some errors in here. But what you'll see is you'll see the, the raw values, the number of people that, um, uh, selected that option. And then below it, there's a, there's a gray separator. Below it, there's a, um, uh, the relative proportion. So that's a, a, you know, a fraction. So 0 0.53 is 53%, 0 0.47 is 47%, et cetera. Cool? So um, again, I, I, I need a little bit more time to clean it up, but I'll be, I'll be sharing that with you guys shortly. So, um, so yeah, so there you go. So so we, we've closed the survey. So nobody, so don't need to bother sharing it anymore or what have you. Um, and that is, uh, that's coming along. So great. So uh, what we're going to be doing uh, this week is you guys are going to get this survey and um, you guys are going to do a brief write-up. Okay. What does brief write-up mean? It means two pages. And uh, one is just a text description. And uh, one is, is at least one quantitative presentation of, of some aspect of the, um, of, of, our, of our survey. What does that mean? Well, that could mean two related questions. That could mean three related questions. That could be, you know, a, a, a big question. It doesn't matter. It's, it's you're going to pick one aspect of uh, any aspect that's mo of most interest to you in terms of coastal management that we asked questions about and present that data. You could present that in, in tabular form and as a table. You could present that as a bar graph or whatever. You just have to do a, a quantitative presentation um, of the data. As far as the, the one page summary, you should have a, a brief uh, one paragraph just summary of what the poll was. We, um, we conducted an online anonymous poll in the month of October. We surveyed, for, or we got a total of 422 responses, uh, primarily from California, that kind of stuff. So just a, a, an objective one paragraph, quick summary of what we did. And then the rest of that one page, uh, is, is exploring whatever dimension of 
coastal management you're interested in. So if you're interested in how frequently people go to the beach, you could, you could talk about that question or those questions. If you're interested in how much seafood people eat, you could um, answer that question or those questions um, uh, and so on and so forth. You can get, you can do as, as uh, uh, straightforward or as sophisticated an exploration as you like. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, if you, if you wanted to look at um, people's going to the beach uh, uh, now or, or, or frequency of going to the beach now versus, um, excuse me, uh, uh, under COVID versus um, their frequency of going to the beach without COVID, that's cool. That, that would be a great um, thing you could present. Alternatively, if you wanted to say, hey, I wonder if men go to the beach the same as women or young folks versus old or voters versus non-voters. You could, you could slice and dice the data um, any which way you want to. So this is not meant to be a stressful activity for you. This is, this is for you to do any exploration you wish in terms of our current public um, using of coastal resources or um, their perception of coastal resources. So it's super wide open and it's whatever uh, floats your boat and whatever is of interest. If you guys are, um, if you did one of your um, case studies on some aspect of this and you want to sort of just, uh, you know, continue on that, that those ideas you were thinking of in your case study using this data, that's totally cool. If you want to do something totally different, that's cool. If you're in another class and you, and that class is talking about, I don't know, talking about climate change or something, and you wanted to look at the climate change question, that's cool. So it's very open-ended. Again, a, a brief uh, text, and, and I, I, will, I will send this all out when I share it, but just so you guys understand, what you're gonna be working on is, is some interpretation of the public's um, relationship with the coastal zone. You do not have to, um, uh, you do not have to um, talk about all the data, you can just do a subset, the part that's most interesting to you. So don't feel like you have to completely look through the entirety of the data set. You guys know what the questions are. I would just say, um, think of the top one or two or three things of interest and jump to those sections of the data and start and, and, and dive into those. Cool. Okay, so, um, so uh, a couple quick things uh, when, when this is, but when I do get this uh, shared with you guys, just to just to note, um, uh, or, or I'll say the common questions I've gotten over the years are, um, uh, let's see, how can I, how can, so can you guys all see my, you guys can all see my screen. Let me make it a little bit bigger maybe. So again, um, I, I may have some summary statistics on the bottom. You are welcome to use those. You are also welcome to generate your own stats. You can either do your own calculations or you can import this data into whatever program you are mo more comfortable with um, to do your, your analysis or your explanations or whatever. I would just suggest to you guys that when you do get that um, um, file to just save a copy of it. So if you start doing any kind of manipulations, you don't, you don't corrupt your, um, your, your data set. Um, I will say that, uh, uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that. Okay, so one of the most common things is um, uh, it can be hard. You can be, it can be easy to lose track of where you are in your data sheet when we have these large uh, files. So what I've done is I've done a, f I, I've frozen, if you guys can all see this, I've frozen the top uh, couple rows. So I can move, I, I can, I'm scrolling on my cursor now, I can move up and down, but I, I can still tell that M is uh, question six and is about the essential worker. You, that is purely for aesthetics and for, for ease of navigation. This in no way, shape or form impacts the data that is there. So you are more than welcome to remove that or to add it in, uh, add in another split or a freeze, what have you. Uh, and then another common one that'll happen sometimes when we're on a Mac getting the file from a PC or vice versa, sometimes the columns will change their width Again, not a problem. The data is still all good. So um, 
for example, here. It's not not really showing what I wanted to show. Um, but let's let's say right here, we had something that was three thousand four five or three million, something like that. Okay, so so let's say we had a we we had a, a value in this cell. If you note, when I put my cursor on this cell, up here in my function display, it uh, it tells me that that. In this cell is number three, four, five, uh, four, six, five, six, right? Uh, sometimes when you download it or when we, we open on a different program or something of that nature or suck it into Google Sheets or, or, or some uh, 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 different importation or viewing option, it might look like this. Okay, so see how this cell down here is all these pound signs? I, I will often get the question, oh, Dr. A, there's the data is corrupt. Or there's something wrong because I can't, you know, da, 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 da. That's simply the way um, the program is displaying the data. The data is still all there. And how do I know that? I know that because if I click on the cell and look over here, it's the same exact, it's the same exact value. All you need to do is grab the, um, is resize that cell. And it'll be okay, right? So all the functions, everything you're going to be doing is is not uh, screwed up. Even though people sometimes freak out and think their data is uh, is no longer working, um, uh, I think that's the most common question I get in terms of when we start sharing these data sets. And so I don't want anybody to to freak out. Cool. Um, there's other questions, but but uh, but that's that's the main that's the main thing. Uh, again, that's, it's the same data in numeric and in choice text tabs. It's just uh, just the variables are coded differently, but they're they're all equivalent to one another, and uh, and and so on and so forth. All right, great. Um, any qu any questions about that initially, or anybody uh, wondering about something in particular they want to they're, they're most curious to see? No, everybody's still asleep. I just want to be clear. So we were writing uh, a, hip, a, a hypothesis for this data set, either one or two, that has to be one page long. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a two page thing you're turning in. One is text page, one is just text, and then one page is just your, your tab, tables or, or, or figures. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so it's not meant to be a long assignment. It's just, uh, it's just, what do we do? And then, and then you're interested in seafood or you're in a, interested in, uh, I don't know, natural disasters or, or what, whatever seafood consumption, whatever the, the deal was, you guys can, you guys can focus in on that after you do the, the brief summary of the, of what we did. What, what are people most interested in looking at? Ashley, what are you most interested in looking at? Um, I wanted to see how fit or like how people's health was affected or if they were still doing activity okay. during this time. Cool. Cool. Uh, Ramey, what do you, what do you, uh, what are you most curious to look at or poke around with? Um, I don't remember the natural disaster question, so I'm going to look at that more climate change. Okay. Uh, Eric, what about you? For what I'm going to look at? Yeah, <coughs> what are you just curious about looking at? Yeah. Um, I was thinking about like how people are coming back to the beach. Okay. All right, cool. Zach? Um, I think the single use plastics question is kind of interesting, like whether you use more or less during all of this. Very good. Uh, who else? Uh, Catrice, what do you think about, what do you think about, what are you most interested in looking at? I was thinking the same thing as Zach about um, plastic use. More okay. or less. Cool. 
yeah so anything is anything is fair game and you guys can can delve into it and again uh, uh once i get it cleaned up you guys can have at it so you're welcome to look right now um the other thing i'm going to share is i'm going to share the the output report from from um uh what's it called from um Qualtrics, it just it, but it's just it's it's kind of an ugly beast. It, it's a big, huge PDF, and so um, it's it's pretty clunky. I don't I don't think it's super useful, but I'll I'll share it just so you guys have it. Um, but really, the the main thing you guys will want will be the uh, the Excel spreadsheet. So cool. Okay. Awesome, awesome. All right, great. Um, so again, uh, I will poke everybody when I I finish cleaning the data. Um, next, uh, I want to talk about our, oh, sorry, any questions, any other, before I leave that, any questions about that? Um, I kind of have a random question about Excel. Yeah. Is, is there a way to freeze both a row and a column? Um, okay. cause I was only able to do yeah. one or the other. Yeah. So, um, uh, so this'll, this'll, uh, you can do the same thing in, um, uh, what was it? Google sheets as well. So they're all a little teeny bit different of the actual step you do, but you can do it. So I have a I have a Mac, so I'm on a Mac at this moment. And so if I wanted to do that, I would, um, so just to be clear, you guys, what, what she's asking about is, so right now I've frozen um, between two and three, right? So if I scroll all the way up to my, my top here, you can see uh, here's one, two, and it's frozen, but we can also see one, two below here. And as I start to pull down, those, that one and two stays the same. So there's two basic approaches. There's one where where those those components don't move at all, and there's another option where they're just divided, and we can we can mess around with them. So for example, in my case, I'm on a uh, let's see what what version am I? I'm on Microsoft Excel uh, 16.4 on a Mac. And uh, so if I come up here, for in my case, it's under the Windows uh, option, the Windows tab. And I can come down here and I can hit Remove Split, right? So if I want to insert that anywhere, I can just you know pick the row I want or what have you and, and then activate it. There's usually two approaches. There's the approach of picking the, selecting the entirety of the column or selecting the entirety of the row by picking the letter or the, the number as the case may be. The other option is to just is to just select a cell. So now I've placed my cursor on, what is this, K, K10. And here I can come up here and instead of doing a uh, uh, split in the case of Max or in case of Excel, they call it split and freeze pane. It's a little bit different, uh, different terms on uh, Google Sheets. But if I pick freeze pane, so now, now I got I can go all these different directions, right? So so now I have this quadrant here, I have this quadrant here, I have this quadrant here, and this one here. Does that help you, Rami? Yeah, I was clicking on the entire row, so I yeah. think that's why I couldn't. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so again, all that is just to make it easier for you, but but it does it does not. Uh, uh, contaminate or or change the underlying data for for anybody, for any on your file. Okay. Uh, any any other uh, just logistical questions about that? All right. Great. So I'll I'll poke everybody when I when I get it cleaned up and and just to show you what I'm talking about. Um, uh, as I was calculating these. As I was calculating some of these values, so if we scroll over to here, somewhere over here, somewhere over here. Um, so here I have uh, how far people were driving this week and, and that worked fine. So it looked like, ah, data are good, right? Uh, so uh, people were driving uh, at least in the, the, the week before they took the, the week of the that they took the survey um, they're driving reported 123 miles or so um, but if there weren't covid they would be driving on the order of three four times as much 
Um, but when I when I tried to calculate some other things like like yeah, so uh, how much seafood people ate? Uh, because people would type in things like N O N E instead of zero and things of that nature. So I just have to code those right. And I thought I coded everything, but as you can tell right here, something is wrong. So instead of giving me a numerical um, uh, mathematical solution, it's saying that there's something in here that's, that looks like a number, but it's actually Excel thinks it's a text. And so those, that's, that's why I have to go back and, and clean this. Um, so uh, you're welcome to start poking around the data set, but just realize I haven't there might be a few errors like that if you were to try to go calculate some numbers there might be a little bit of error in there and i want to make sure that's cleaned up okay all right great that is our uh uh coast and the coronavirus uh data so have fun playing with that um next i want to talk about our uh field trip our our uh coastal trip um having issues. So most of the people that I've reached out to um, said we're not allowed to come there now currently in the coronavirus. So they all apologize, but they said that they, uh, they've, they've sought their permissions and the, um, their facilities are saying, sorry, can't take student groups uh, at this point, which, which um, sucks. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm working on some alternatives but I'm, I'm running into some problems. So at this point, so originally we we're talking about doing our trip next week. Um, not gonna be able to have that in place yet. Um, instead, what I'm gonna try to do is have a trip the Monday of Thanksgiving week. So rather than this next session, so we're gonna have regular class or regular Zoom virtual um, instruction next week. Um, that was different from what I hoped to tell you um, when we just talk, talked about this last week. So just FYI, uh, I'm, I'm still working on what we might be able to do um, as a class and have a face-to-face -face session, but, uh, but that's where we are at that. So I apologize, but um, there's only so much I can do in terms of permissions and stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, I think I'll... I'll uh, take a pause on that. And the next thing I wanted to just check on was uh, how everybody's doing, how everybody's feeling. So um, it's been, it was a crazy week last week. There was a lot of uh, weirdness and, uh, and uncertainty and all that, that type of uh, environment. How are you guys, how are you guys feeling um, this week? Tired, exhausted, what? Tired. <laughs> I don't feel any difference. Okay. Still pretty okay. tired. I just had a lot of homework this week, so it's just nonstop work. Getting to the end of the semester, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, well, well, that was a lot better than our last presidential election. <laughs> the last presidential election, we were talking about um, the way it, the way it fell out in the schedule. We were talking about coastal zone management, and um, it was. It was unclear uh, if it was really worth. Uh, it, was, it was it was unclear how I was going to have that conversation because um, the incoming administration had very different policies from all of American history, and so um, it, it was it was an interesting time. I would say um, one thing that that uh, seems likely to happen with the incoming administration is that these things we've been talking about. Um, today we're going to hear about invasive species, how we manage invasive species, all that kind of stuff. It's it's at least conceptually is going back more towards the the traditional way we've approached environmental management, and at least at least there's more. Um, uh, it's going to be more folks amenable to traditional approaches and traditional tools, policy tools, etc. Um, the, the current era, the last four years has been a little bit, um, not a little bit, a, a highly deviant from, from the traditions of the last several decades. 
so uh so that is um that's what it is <laughs> um and uh hopefully uh a positive thing for a lot of these management issues we've been talking about and will be talking about. Um, yeah, I guess I guess that's what I'll say. I guess uh, since people are good and burnt out, we don't need to say anything else. And uh, and thanks for that. Okay, so let me check to see. Um, give me a minute. I'm going to pause our recording here, and I'm going to uh, see if Dr. Lambrinos is nearing us to join us. Give me one second here.